Hey girl, Marissa here. You are listening to the Codepend Dummy Podcast. As a young woman, you have been raised, reinforced, and rewarded for putting the needs of others above your own. Now, in your 20s, you're finding yourself exhausted, exasperated, and enveloped in shit relationships, especially the one you have with yourself. Codependency is a way of being where we put the feelings, wants, and needs of others above our own in an unconscious attempt to meet our own feelings, wants, and needs. Sorry to break it to you, sis, but that is not sustainable. This podcast is to help you undo all that so you can stop playing small and start taking up space, you dummy. Let's get to it. Oh, she may be weary. Them young girls, they do get wearied. Wearing that same old shaggy dress, yeah, yeah. But when she gets weary, try a little tenderness, yeah. You know she's waiting, just anticipating the thing that you'll never, 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 never possess, yeah, yeah. But while she's there waiting, without them try a little tenderness, that's all you got to do. There's your serenade, my dear sweet listener. I hope you haven't stopped listening. I wanted to serenade you with Otis Redding's Try a Little Tenderness. Have I sung it to you before? I'm not sure, but with year two of the podcast being all about tenderness, gentleness, kindness, being soft, sensitive to your pain, I wanted to sing you that and start with that today. And today's episode... I'm curious, how is your body doing, baby girl? How's your heart, your spirit, your mind? This episode is titled BHSM, Body, Heart, Spirit, and Mind Inventory. I want to check in with you. I want you to check in with yourself on those parts, those areas of your life and how they relate to your codependency. We will get into that. And for those of you who are newer, or maybe this is your first episode and you're wondering, what is this serenading and BHSM voice. This is Marissa Esquivel, your hostess mostest. And this is either episode 69 or 70. I haven't figured out the order. And these podcasts, this, this podcast, these episodes are a what I would consider a love letter to you to help you stop playing small and start taking up space. And we are accomplishing that one episode at a time. I will admit that despite this being episode 69 or 70, despite doing this for a year, I was anxious in brainstorming this episode and writing this episode. I'm not anxious at the moment, but 
it's hard. It's hard, girl. It is hard to, to put yourself out there. It's hard for me. I'll speak for myself. It's hard for me to put myself out there. And recently, I will admit, I looked at the steps, the steps for the podcast. It's fun. I get to see, ooh, there's a new listener in Indonesia. Or, damn, I am popping off in Seattle. <laughs> like, thank you, Seattle. And also, I see dips in listenership, or I will get a negative comment, or I will, the doubt, the doubt creeps in. And I sense at the core, fundamentally, I fear that I will continue to create content, which I've committed to do for at least the next four years. This is a five-year endeavor. I will continue to create content and I will eventually bore, annoy, disgust, exclude, or some other terrible uh, verb, (sighs) the fuck out of you. And this podcast will eventually be an echo chamber with, between me and myself. Um, and yeah, I was, I was trying to reflect on that, you know, why, why the anxiety? Why Marissa, why are you anxious in brainstorming, writing, recording, uploading and airing your podcast episodes? And I couldn't help but remember back to Right, you know, it's always helpful to consider, well, like, where, where does this fear come from? When have I annoyed, disgusted, deterred people in the past? I couldn't help but think about my older sister and times when I was little, I was younger and sharing ideas sharing experiences, being excited about something at school or something I had created. And I wanna emphasize the fact that she was my older sister. Older sisters, part of their job description is at times to be supportive of younger sisters and also to be annoyed. And she would get so annoyed. (laughs) I think my, my, my little codependent heart was very sensitive to that and potentially discerned or concluded that I should keep some of my ideas, thoughts, observations, writings, trophies to myself. And that's not her fault. That's me showing her something, her going, ugh, and then me perceiving that as causing it when, I don't know, she was 16, 17 years old. She was on the struggle bus and didn't have the awareness on how impactful that could be. So for all of you listening, if you find yourself anxious, nervous, afraid, when you do put yourself out there, like I do at times, I would encourage you as I encourage myself to to practice tenderness. Like, oh, Marissa. You're anxious, you're nervous, you're fearful that you will eventually 
be rejected and abandoned by all your listeners. And it makes sense because you sensed rejection and abandonment when you did put yourself out there in the past. And it makes sense. It's understandable. It could happen. This could turn into an echo chamber. And And it's okay. Being, you know, just just acknowledging, okay, you're anxious. Okay, you're nervous. This is where it came from. Sitting with and honoring that. And also practicing tenderness by not allowing that to get in the way of me brainstorming, writing, recording, uploading, and airing these episodes. Yeah. And also I was picking, I was picking up my nails earlier. It's like, oh man, I am, I'm anxious. I'm nervous putting myself out there in hopes that in my efforts to stop playing small and start taking up space, you two can stop playing small and start taking up space. And not let conclusions you came to in the past get in the way of you doing that. There's a bigger mission here besides having you all like, accept, and adore me all the time. I don't want to be rejected and abandoned. And of course, I want to be accepted and adored and loved. But if this does turn into an echo chamber, potentially having myself as my audience would be really good for me because ultimately that self-approval, self-adoption, self-acceptance, that's the name of the game for myself and yourself. And I'm working and I will continue to work on breathing through the anxiety that comes when I produce these episodes, modeling to you all how to not let these core beliefs get in the way, how to acknowledge them, how to not let them get in the way and create goals, create motivation that isn't based on the approval of others. I'm not continuing to vie for my older sister's approval. And thus, I can't continue to vie for yours. Being able to create content that I am proud of, that I sense would resonate with me 10 years ago, that will help young women who struggled like me 10 years ago in their 20s. That's the goal for now. Okay. Thank you for listening to this acknowledgement, working through, moving past my core, some of my core beliefs and experiences in the past. I wonder how you're doing that this week. Checking in with you. What core beliefs are you pushing past? What core beliefs do you sense are coming up and getting in your way? Where have you sensed anxiety, fear, doubt, behaviors like picking at your nails or just those those vices that we tend to reach for when it may not be clear, but there is 
and underlying fear, anxiety, worry, concern, doubt. Um, how are you coping with that? How are you acknowledging it, feeling it, and discerning how to honor it? Is it pushing past? Is it sitting with? Is it not doing something? I guess I could not record an episode. That is an option. Trying to see and create options. I sense in our codependency, we just, I don't know, we really, we live in extremes and we tend to have one option or sense we have one option. So trying to create options for you to choose from. And continuing to check in with yourself on a daily basis. How am I feeling? How's my mood? What am I needing? If there is anxiety, fear, doubt, what's going on? What is that telling me? And how can I address it? Okay, today's episode, how is your body, heart, spirit, and mind doing? How is your physical health, emotional health? spiritual health, and mental health. I am going to talk about God when it comes to spiritual health. And I think I've mentioned God before. And also not focused an episode or part of an episode on spiritual health. So this is a topic I hope to integrate because in my own healing from codependency, I have had to cultivate my spirituality my religion, my religious, spiritual life. I am not sure if you have a God or gods, if you have a higher power, a relationship with a greater spirit, a belief in something, a religious practice or a spiritual practice. And while I discuss spiritual health, your your spirit, I have no intention of offending, alienating, or proselytizing. And if I do offend, alienate, or proselytize, I would appreciate you contacting me to help me understand that and work towards not doing that. And I apologize in advance if I offend, alienate, or proselytize. Like I said, in my healing journey from codependency, I sense I have needed to find a God, find God in addition to working on my mental health, emotional health, physical health, relational health, financial health, all the areas of my life because, and and I would encourage you to reflect on this topic on on your religious and spiritual life 
because in my codependency, other people were my God. I wasn't consciously aware of it, but I literally worshipped other people the way that those who have a faith, who have a religious belief, who have a spiritual life, the way that they worship, I worshiped people. I worshiped my mom. I worshiped my dad. I worshiped my ex-boyfriends. I worshiped my friends, the baristas in my life, the professors. I worshiped other people the way that those who had a religion worshiped, right? So there are some practices, some religions where there are traditions, there are daily practices, weekly practices, monthly practices, there are holidays and seasons In, in contrast to that, I, I would check in with, I had daily practices with my ex-boyfriends and friends that I was codependent with. I interacted with my parents and sometimes weekly, monthly basis, base spaces that mimicked religion. I just, I wasn't aware of it at the time where, and yeah, even those who do have a religious, a spiritual life, they, I remember when I was younger, we had the, the WWJD bracelets. What would Jesus do? And I think I had one. And yet in my codependency, you know, with my ex-boyfriend, I've had ex-boyfriends, but with, you know, one of them that was arguably the most codependent relationship, I, I've talked about him a decent amount on this show. And I, I would, I would spend my day apart from him. And yet I would cater my day with this underlying question, what would what would he want me to do? What would he approve of me doing? What would, we would have, we would try to have a nightly call. It was long distance. And I would base my decisions in my day. And I would imagine something I was doing at 8 a.m. being able to tell him at 8 p.m. when we had our call. You know, people say like, oh, like God is always with me. And it was like, my ex or my boyfriend at the time, my boyfriend is always with me. He is always with me. And I, you know, what would he want me to do? What would he think? Oh, I can't wait to tell him about this. I, right, my, my God consciousness was other people consciousness. So that, that is a short preface to this discussion on your spiritual life and, and why I would encourage you to consider cultivating one because you, you might be worshiping, you might have a religion that puts other people, humans in your life on pedestals that you then worship. And, you know, you could discern, well, I'd rather take those people off those pedestals and not replace it with a higher power, not replace it with a, an almighty God. Just, just not, not really have one, just have a, a life where I, I base my decisions on, on good values and, 
and virtues, that's totally, totally fine. I sense that if we're looking at a spectrum of, of gods, we could have humans on one side. We could have um, beings like super um, beings, right? God on the other. And somewhere in the middle could be a an in-between for you where you just put morals and values as your compass. So it's for you to discern. And also think about how, how are the people in your life currently gods to you? How do they rule, impact, influence, shape your day all the time? With all of this in mind, I'm going to walk you through this 23 item inventory on your body, heart, mind, and spirit. And we're going to break down the areas. So I'm going to ask you questions about your body, your physical health, your mind, your mental health, your heart, your emotional health, and your spirit, your, your spiritual health. I It's from this inventory, authentic spirituality I was given by a mentor all about honoring body, heart, mind, and spirit. I will put a link in the show notes if you want to browse the list while I go through it, if you want to look at it afterwards. And I'm going to try to go through these sections as if I'm 23, answering my 23-year-old version of me versus today. Something I know that happens for me being codependent, having really poor self-esteem is, is I compare and despair a lot. And I do not want you to, if, if you have been a listener, if you're a new listener to hear some of the episodes I've shared and think I don't know if you think this, but like, wow, Marissa's really got it going on. Uh, Cause I don't, and I definitely haven't in the past. It's been a lot of work to get here to this moment in time, recording this with you. And yeah, I don't, I don't want you to hear me and feel despair and hopelessness that, that you'll never get here. Um, yeah, I was a hot, 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 hot mess. So I'm going to try and answer this in the present and also 10 years ago when I was starting out on my healing journey. And let's take a tea break. So I've got some stress relief tea. It's delicious. I wonder what tea you guys are drinking, but yeah, let's all hydrate for a moment before we dive into the authentic spirituality 23 item checklist. Yeah, okay. Some background, just, just painting a picture of where I was at when I was 23 and where I'm at at 33. You can also do this too. You can imagine and answer these questions in the present and pick a time period six months ago, six years ago to compare and contrast yourself with yourself rather than comparing yourself to everybody who seems to have it going on on Instagram, which is not true, but it's hard for us to discern that. 
So yeah, compare yourself with yourself. So at 23, 10 years ago, I'm recording this at the beginning of April. So April, early April of 2012, I was a recent grad, almost two years from UC Santa Barbara. I was an administrative assistant at a law firm in Santa Barbara. I stayed there after graduating for an ex-boyfriend who was my boyfriend at the time. I was going to night school to become a therapist to get into grad school. That's, I was doing that. I was a year, almost two years out of a toxic codependent relationship. Actually, I was probably in another toxic codependent relationship with a homeless man which I will talk about in another episode. Told you guys, hot, hot mess. Uh, yeah, I was, I, was in a, I was in another toxic relationship. I was running half marathons like a crazy person. I was attending 12-step meetings for my emotional eating, which I didn't know at the time was rooted in my codependency. I thought that the emotional eating was the root, but there was, there was a root beneath that. I was in therapy and I'd been on my healing journey about three years, thanks to starting therapy at 20. So yeah, 23, I'd been in therapy three years. And that's, that's me 10 years ago. And today I'm a licensed therapist, podcaster, providing talk therapy online to 20 something struggling with codependency. I live in Pomona, California. I am married almost four years to a great guy, not a toxic codependent relationship at all. It's the opposite. So a healthy interdependent relationship. Um, I'm in therapy sometimes two times a week on my healing journey now going on 13 years and uh, life gets messy, but I'm not a hot mess. I'm active. I integrate self-care on a daily basis and I'm in this moment, early April, 2022. All right. So we're going to compare and contrast these two me's 23 and 33 year old me and and also yeah while I'm going through these questions I'm curious how how, what comes up all right so the first part of this authentic spirituality inventory honoring your body heart mind and spirit question Am I honoring my body? Are you honoring your body? Five items. First item. (sighs) Number one, I listen to the aches, tensions, and feelings in my body to learn more about myself. Number two, when I am tired, I stop and rest. Three, I exercise regularly. Four, I did not overeat and did not eat lots of junk food today. And five, I ate at least one balanced meal today and sat down to eat. So 23 year old me, I, oh man, I did not listen to the aches in my body to learn more about myself. I did not stop and rest. Uh, I did exercise regularly. I told you guys I was running half marathons, but I did overeat at times, the emotional eating. And I ate balanced meals sometimes, but also did not. So I actually remember at 23, I 
I was running so many half marathons. I developed plantar, plantar fasciitis. So I was, I was literally like burning my feet into the ground. Um, yeah, just, just, I don't know. I was like, like a chicken with its body cut off, not a chicken with its head cut off where I just, I was cut off from my body. So yeah, I, I remember I was working, I was going to school, I'm running half marathons. I may have even been doing biathlons where I swim in the ocean. I was going to 12 step meetings, I was going to meditation meetings. I was just, yeah, I was doing like way too much to get the approval of everyone under the sun. And I was tired, but not conscious of it. And yeah, that turned into overeating. Mm -mm. No, I was not honoring my body. I looked like I was honoring my body. I dressed like I was honoring my body. And yet I sense ultimately I was seeking approval, especially from men, but from anyone. And no, I was definitively not honoring my body. Fast forward at 33. I do listen to aches, tensions, and feelings. So right now I'm nursing a injury in my right hip and my left knee. I am still running. I ran a three quarter marathon last year, last fall, 20 miles. And I, I did run it with some aches and pains, but after that, I did go to the doctor and I am on a strict physical therapy regimen, which I'm doing when I'm tired, I do stop and rest or I take a nap. I do exercise regularly. I, I really, I would say the past you know, with coronavirus, my emotional eating, there was an uptick. And more recently, especially very recently, I would say like this year, especially 2022, my eating is so good. Like, so good. Like, damn. Wow. I'm like a, I'm not a normal person with food. I do. I do still seek food for comfort to, to regulate my emotions, deal with anxiety. And yet this year, especially thanks to all the other things, right? We'll, we'll get to it, but honoring my mind, my heart, my spirit, that, that has improved a lot. So definitely more than one balanced meal a day, not eating junk food on a regular basis, not overeating due to emotions. So I'm, I'm grateful to share that with all of you. And, but yeah, just, just a reminder, I have weighed about 40 pounds heavier than I do right now. I have eaten food out of the trash can. I have stolen food from others, snuck food, like up and down, like yo-yo dieting with my weight throughout my twenties, hot, hot mess. So grateful for that improvement. All right. Next area. Am I honoring my mind? Are you honoring your mind? First item four. I've taken the time to read a good book. I took an interesting class or went to a lecture. Three, I watched an enriching educational program on television. And four, I was able to exchange ideas and talk about opinions with another. So at 23, I, I was reading, I probably was reading the, um, Oh God, Katniss Everdeen, The Hunger Games. I definitely loved The Hunger Games after I got out of college. 
I was taking interesting classes related to psychology, going to spiritual talks, right? I was on my journey. I was seeking, uh, watching enriching educational program on television. Mm, no, I watched a lot of housewives back then. Lots of housewives and Netflix binges on the couch. Uh, exchanging ideas and talking about opinions. I sense at 23, I thought despite my bachelor's, despite pursuing more school, I, I was an idiot. I was a, I was a dumbass. I was intellectually incompetent and felt really threatened in certain situations where there was encouragement to exchange ideas and talk opinions. I sensed I didn't have any legs to stand on metaphorically. Yeah, just no, no real arguments, no true wisdom, knowledge, experience to share. Yeah, just, just pretending, just a facade. People thought I was smart, but I didn't, I didn't understand why you thought that. So honoring my mind at 23, mm, yes and no but really doubting my mind's worthiness, I would argue that. And now, fast forward at 23, I, yeah, I, I read all the time, like all the time, you guys. I don't think it's too much. Sometimes it might be too much content. I, being codependent, my husband actually has said, like, you, you need to stop reading so many self-help books because I'll try to please the author who doesn't know I actually exist. They're, you know, they write books to the reader, but similar to making ex-boyfriends, my parents, others in my past, my gods, I, I will try to follow some self-help books to the letter and it's, it's too extreme. And then I get anxious because I'm not following it and I need to follow this to manifest the career, life, wealth, house, career that I want and I sense that if I don't follow it to the letter, it will never happen. And that's crazy making. It's codependent. The author of the book is not there. They are not going to abandon, reject, exclude me. And yet I do. I like, I get, I get codependent with, with these, some of the books that I read. So I, I take time to read. I'm learning to discern from the material what is helpful or hurtful to integrate in my life. I do take interesting classes. I do go to lectures. I am a, a student of life and I, for my job. I do have to, for my career, being a licensed therapist, there are courses that I need to take to continue to maintain my license, which is great. And yeah, I do go to talks, workshops, retreats, etc. I enriching educational programs on television. Yeah. I would say I watch I don't watch that much television that this has been something I've discerned over time. And recently I don't, I 
don't watch TV. Really? Um, that it could could be a face, but yeah, um, probably for the past year, year, I haven't watched much television, which is hard because I am codependent and a lot of the people I interact with watch TV and I worry that by not watching TV, I'll have nothing to talk to them about. So then I should watch TV. But yeah, I've been able to create dialogues with them on other things. And exchanging ideas and talking about opinions. Uh, I'm exchanging ideas here. I talk opinions in other circles. I do still question my competence. My confidence is not always present. And yet I no longer believe. I mean, sometimes I still believe I'm an idiot. And, and I sense I practice tenderness with that part like I am right now and I just record and remind myself that, yeah, in, in exchanges of opinions and ideas, the goal is to have a conversation, discussion, dialogue, not to win the approval of the other person. I want connection. I want Gina Metcalf was on a couple weeks ago and she talked about right the dream is to be attached and authentic. So creating and being in spaces to have an opportunity to do that. I sense is what I discern. So not being inauthentic and disconnected is the motive. All right, so we've checked in with the body, we've checked in with the mind, let's check in with the heart. Am I honoring my heart? Am I honoring my emotions? One, I give myself time to cry and grieve over a disappointment. Two, I was able to put into words what I was feeling. Three, I was able to express my anger towards someone that was not destructive to me or them. Four, I have kept a journal of my feelings and attitudes. Five, I've invested quality time with at least one friend this week. Six, I let myself have fun and play. I was able to laugh. Seven, I am not carrying around pent up feelings. And eight, I am experiencing the feeling of freedom to be myself. At 23, oof. Oof, oof, oof. No, 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 no. So, um, well, I was, I cried for years after that first toxic codependent relationship. And I was like a weeping widow. I just, I had lost my ex-boyfriend. I lost my boyfriend. And I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. So I did allow myself to grieve over that disappointment. Um, yeah, I sense, I sense I did, I did cry. I, 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 I gave myself time to cry. If and when I was sad, I did not put in towards what I was feeling because I didn't know what I was feeling. Uh, in the dating relationship I was in, in conflicts at work, no. I did not express my anger. Uh, I actually remember I probably was 23 working at this law firm. I had very, I had a very hard time with some of my coworkers, the fellow administrative assistants. And one time I was so angry after work. I went to the track to run because I'm a, I was a, half marathon runner, I changed and I was so angry at this girl that 
oh, I was thinking about it and obsessing about it. And I literally, I punched the bathroom door in frustration, like, <laughs> punched a door. I wasn't trying to destroy the door or punch a hole in the door, but uh, able to express my anger that was not destructive to me or them. No, I was not able to do that. I remember raging at my dad. Mm, that was a couple years. Mm, that was maybe a couple years before, but no, I did not. I did not express anger in a manner that was not destructive to myself or other people. I did have a journal. I did. I was journaling daily as I do journal daily now. Quality time with friends. Yes. Have fun and play. No, no. I was very serious. I was intense. I am intense. I was intense back then. No, if I had time to have fun and play, it was on my list of things to do, like have fun and play. Uh, I was carrying around pent up feelings from my ex, from my childhood and my current relationship, uh, freedom to be myself. No, I was seeking approval, affection and attention from others at all costs all the time. I just may have been more, uh, the, the people were may have been better. So seeking approval from my therapist, from my 12 step sponsor, from my running friends, but still I was, I was codependent. And at 33, uh, giving myself to time to cry and grieve. Yes. I, since I do that, I'm able to put words into what I'm feeling, expressing my anger. I, yeah, at least talking about it in therapy, discerning whether or not it's appropriate to express or not. I, I do journal. I, I'm creating, I'm, I'm working on creating a community now that, I mean, who knows with coronavirus, but being out more, trying to connect with people more in person, 2022, that has been and is a goal for me. And yeah, I would say at least once a week, I am a coffee, a walk, a field trip together to a talk. I, I am working on that. <sighs> Fun and play. Mm, working on that. I, yeah, I definitely create time to, to be with others, to hang out, watch, I guess, yeah, watch like a comedy special together. I do watch comedy specials. I do laugh not carrying around pent up feelings. Yeah. I sense I'm, I'm not, or if, and when I do have a reaction, I, I still, to this day, I can be sarcastic, condescending and demeaning to my mom and dad, especially. I like throw shade at my mom and dad. And I'm like, hmm. Where is that? Where's that coming from? So working on that in therapy because nobody else is responding like I am responding to them when they ask some question about how to work something on their iPhone. You know, it's 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 something they don't know and I can help them. But I'm like, ugh, <sighs> you boomer, boomer who doesn't know. And yeah, I tease them. It's not kind. So I'm consciously working on that. Those pent up feelings, right? Disappointment, resentment, anger, hurt. That's, that's for me to, to resolve and work through currently. It's not, it's not, it's not from the present. So it's really for me to work through. And experiencing the feeling of freedom to be myself. Uh, yes, as evidenced by recording this and sharing this with you. 
in hopes that stepping into my freedom, you can too. And lastly, am I honoring my spirit? Are you honoring your spirit? Six items. I have spent time by myself in prayer, meditation, or solitary thought. I have nurtured myself by listening to my inner voice. I have been quiet, yielding, and still. I took a walk by water, through woods, in a woods, or climbed a hill. I listened to beautiful words. I meditated on poetry. I listened to music that inspired me. At 23, I was meditating, maybe 10 minutes in the morning. I got an app. Mm, the app is still Insight, Insight Timer. I believe it's free and you can purchase stuff within the app, but I, I, I was, I was starting to meditate at 23. I went to group meditations. I went to lectures from spiritual teachers trying to learn how to meditate and pray, trying to learn how to pray. But yeah, I think I like prayed for my ex-boyfriend to call me or I prayed for my boss to like me or for my coworker who was driving me nuts to stop driving me nuts. Wasn't really seeking or conversing with God or asking for, for mm, calm, for relief from my loneliness, right? Not for my ex-boyfriend to call me, for a sense of pride in a healthy manner in the work I was doing, not my boss's approval. And patience with my coworker as opposed to right changing her so she didn't annoy the shit out of me <sighs> listening to my inner voice i don't sense i you know my internal chatter like i said other people were my god and so i had other people's voices inside my head all the time all the time just really trying to I was trying to discern what they would want, what they would need, what they would approve of. So no, I did not have that at 23. Quiet, yielding, and still? No. No. I, I had that, like, I shook my leg all the time. I remember I would, like, shake my foot so fast. I can't even do it now. I'm trying to do it, but no. My, my foot would shake so fast because I was so anxious. I would wake up and I think even before I was really conscious, my foot would, one of my feet would be shaking. No. And if I had to be quiet and still, internally, my foot was shaking. No, no, no calm. I was, I was. I mean, even right now I'm getting anxious or energetic as I reflect on that. So no, uh, I did, I did take walks and runs. I ran at the beach all the time. That was beautiful. I did love it. And training for half marathons, one benefit to that was if, and when I did go visit somewhere, I would just run around, you know, my family would go to Monterey and I'd run around Monterey or I visit my friend in Bakersfield and I just run around Bakersfield and I did get exposed or I exposed myself to a lot of beauty around mostly California, but training for half marathons. That was, that was a perk, beautiful words, meditating on poetry. No. And listening to music that inspired me. Yes. Music has been fundamental in my healing journey. So finding songs about, I mean, even, you know, taking songs like Otis Redding's Try a Little Tenderness and applying that to myself, that yes, 
that has been, is, and will be a part of my healing journey. And yeah, fast forward to 33. I meditate every day, twice a day. My therapist prescribed transcendental meditation, which is a practice where you sit for 20 minutes, two times a day to chill the fuck out. And you can look it up, but usually there's a mantra or I don't know. I just, I, I do different things for 20 minutes, two times a day. Uh, listening to my inner voice. Yes. I've, I have created and cultivated discernment and hearing it, right. You know, shoving other people's voices aside to truly get in touch with my inner voice, (sighs) quiet, yielding, and still yes. Yeah, I am able to do that. And all the time, I'll start picking up my fingers or I want to eat something. But building that, I, I do walk. I walk a lot currently because the injury. So yeah, being, being out in nature by water, through fields, beautiful words. I don't know. I guess I need to add some more poetry in my life. And like I said, I do listen to music that, that helps. So there's the 23 items, baby girl. And for you, I would encourage you to look at this inventory. I would encourage you to take this inventory and from there discern, right? Like, so for me, I need to work on integrating more poetry. I potentially need to have more fun and play in my life. I need to continue to listen to the aches as I heal from my injuries. So going through this checklist, discerning what you need to do and starting to implement that today, this week, this month, this year. So, so yeah, the, the you 10 years from now can look back and see where you noticed a need for change and you made that change. You can even imagine like, right. So we're looking back, comparing yourself to yourself. You could try and and picture yourself. I could picture myself at 43. How do I want to answer these? And based off that, what do I need to start doing differently? So that is your homework. Go through these 23 items and honor your body, heart, mind, and spirit. B H S M. I love you. Please rate, review, share, or subscribe. If you're wanting some content to help, we have the 30 day self validation challenge at codependemy.com. We have the confiding codependemy 30 days of journaling prompts for a less codependent and more conscious you. And also, I, I can work with you one-on-one can email Marissa at codependemy.com for more information and yeah, love you sending all the tenderness that I can, and I will see you next week. Hey girl, it's Marissa again. I'm not like a regular podcaster. I'm a cool podcaster, right? Thank you for listening and staying till the end. You can find me on Instagram at therapy with Marissa. Email me Marissa at codependummy.com. Check out codependummy.com for more information on the show. And baby girl, a subscribe rating and review 
would be much appreciated. Till next time, I want you to remember, if you are feeling unseen, I see you. If you are feeling unheard, I hear you. And if you think that you don't matter, know that you matter to me. I want you to go out there so you can stop playing small and start taking up space, you dummy. And now, the disclaimer. Girl, this is not therapy and I am not your therapist. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, publisher, or guests are rendering any legal, clinical, or other professional service. If you want or need a professional, please find one.